tried to do was interview some athletes who were children of athletes themselves because um, I was curious to see how they were raised and a lot of them ended up uh, for instance uh, Grant you know Brett Hull ended up playing the same sport as his father Bobby which was hockey but he wasn't pushed to hockey um, Grant Hill's father Calvin was was an NFL football star but Grant ended up playing basketball and, and what I got from them was they weren't really pushed either um, into the sport because just because their parents had done it. And in fact, they found, and now with their own kids, they were backing off even more because they had seen the pitfalls of going the other direction and they knew what had worked for them. One of my favorite lines in the book, it's why we closed with it, but Cliff Floyd, who, as we mentioned, you know, had a situation where his mother, while very well-meaning, sort of pushed him to be great even when he wasn't really ready to be there or was felt like he didn't want that kind of attention and I asked Cliff what he was going to do with his own son he has a young son now I, at the time the son was, was only a couple of years old but you always want your son to be better than, than his father was but I only, only want him to be the best that he, best that he can be and, and I think that that's really the point I think what really got driven home and why we decided to close the book with the athletes talking about their own children is because, you know, we can sit here and speak about what you should or shouldn't do and the athletes can speak about what, you know, what worked for them, but what they're actually taking and implementing with their own kids, I think, will show you what is probably the right way to go in most circumstances, which is to listen to the kid as much as possible, to not force the child to, to a sport just because you played it, just because maybe you had success or maybe you didn't have the kind of success that you wanted to have and are living vicariously through your kid. And Jay Feely, again, the, kid, the NFL kicker, you know, he said, he, you know, one of his girls just wasn't good at anything. She, you know, he exposed her to everything and it wasn't anything. And then finally she found swimming and, and he's like, you know, she kind of likes it and she's not bad at it. And, you know, and she seems to like going to the pool. And he says, you know what, we're going to go with that for now. And I think that's the kind of attitude, sort of this open-minded sort of attitude that the athletes all wanted us to get across. Leroy Horde played um, football for 10 years very physically, and he's had some physical problems after playing as a result of it. And, you know, what he basically, he didn't focus on the physical aspect as much as he said, you know, not every kid is cut out to play football simply because it's a different style of coaching in that sport sometimes than a lot of other sports. It's much more aggressive can be a little bit more difficult to take, a little harsher, and that not every kid is ready to be a football player, but your kid, if you, as, as Andrea has talked about, if you understand your kid and you listen to your kid and you know what your kid likes and doesn't like and can handle and can handle, maybe your kid is better suited to try baseball or tennis or something else. And if you have a very aggressive kid, maybe the kid might like football. And one last takeaway is many of the athletes talked about the advantages of playing multiple sports and the different things that they would take from one sport into another. For instance, Roy Hibbert, who was very tall but didn't play anything but basketball, said, look, LeBron played football. Steve Nash played soccer. Um, Dennis Potts and... Uh, he played football and everything and else. Lacrosse and lacrosse uh, and... And a lot of the athletes ended up going into sports that weren't even their favorite sports or their best sports when they were younger. You know, and I think that's when the parents, what they were trying to make the point was when the parents make a decision when a kid is 12 that you're going to play this and that's all you're going to play, maybe you miss out on the sport that they end up not only enjoying the most, but maybe the sport that once their body develops, maybe there's a sport that they're ultimately going to be better at. Go to sportsmentaltoughness.com to get your free video training and guided visualization MP3 on how to perform under pressure. I'm Craig Sigal, the Mental Toughness Trainer.